All right, so we're here with Tommy Thornton from Automates. Tell us a little bit about your business. Um, uh, I consider Automates my little jet fighter. You know, it was, uh, it was just four years ago, 2019, we were only doing $270,000. Um, and now 1.9 million. We just crossed the threshold. Uh, we're about to hit that $2 million mark. Hopefully this year, we'll definitely surpass it. And so, you know, that's it. And uh, we have grown through a couple acquisitions um, and we have, you know, broken away from the break and fix mindset and we've gone to the MSP mindset now. Yeah. And uh, it seems like we're off to the races. Uh, we're establishing a good team, still building on our leadership team, but uh, we have a really good team that sees the vision right now. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, tell us a little more about the specific results that you had in 2022 that sort of put you in this chair. Well, 2022, you know, I found Robin Robin online, you know, in uh, March and we actually signed up right away. I, I, you know, somehow I slipped past her marketing. I didn't, uh, I never heard of her before until in March and conveniently just, I guess, out of fate, uh, my office manager was watching a video on YouTube. I turn around on my screen, I'm watching the same redhead. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we start collaborating within, I think two hours, I had a contract in hand the very next morning I had it signed. And so um, I intended rapid 55, completely, utterly clueless, um, you know, what I was jumping into. Um, I didn't contact or sign up with TMT for the marketing aspect of it and the sales. I signed up for the access, you know, mm. the coaching is what sold me. I, yeah. You know, I, I spent a lot of time letting my own personal pride and ego get in the way for seeking help from other CEOs or yeah. like-minded CEOs. And this yeah. was the perfect um, resource for me to have that communication between and ask questions. Yeah. And so rapid 55 was, information through a fire hose. Um, it was a lot. It was, I, I was timid going in, um, but the team is quick to put you at ease. Yeah. And then you learn so much so quickly and it's so relatable to your business. You know, I, I just love how it's broken down. Yeah. yeah. So from an implementation standpoint, rapid implementation workshop, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people say, oh, it is, it is so much. It's too much. It's drinking from the fire hose. Now I'm back. I just don't have the time. I, I can't really implement. What were some of the ways you overcame those common challenges that people are facing that, that keep them from yeah. you know, making some of this stuff happen? I would just say it was, uh, for me, it was knowing that what I was currently doing wasn't working. Mm. You know, we went through the acquisitions. We, we went through the growth that we were going to see from the acquisitions. And it was a matter of now I needed to organically grow the company through sales and marketing. I knew that was our next step. And so for me, it was just taking that leap of faith. What we were doing internally up to that point was not working. And so we had to do something. Um, and it was, it was, it's the small things. We didn't take big steps. We crawled, mm. uh, you know, I was like a baby, if you will. I had to learn how to crawl. And then I took timid little steps and, you know, little by little, I just soaked in, you know, the dashboard is massive, right? I soaked in as much as I could, uh, and, you know, consistently watching the sessions, doing the homework that, you know, that I was told to do. Um, and then you pick up little things. You're not going to walk away from rapid retaining 90%. Mm. But if you can get 30% or 40%, in some cases, probably even less than that, then you can build on that foundation that they provide there. Yeah, and that's a key, like you said, small steps. But was there a progression? Are there some specific small steps you'd recommend to people as they're getting started, you've got to have this first, you've got to have this next. What were some of the small steps you took and maybe the order that you took them in? I would say if, if you know, if I was um, given a little roadmap that I would say, start internally, start with your active clients, mm, yeah. um, maybe a nine word email campaign. Uh, definitely everyone should be doing TBR across the board. And that was something we were timid to do. It was almost like we didn't want to face our clients. We didn't want to hear any criticism or any negativity. And the TBR forced our hands. It forced that. And, you know, I would say do your TBR, do your nine word uh, email campaigns, really maintain that constant contact with your clients and selling just becomes second nature, if you will. Even yeah. if you go into a TBR without sales in mind, it just it just happens. It yeah. just it just happens.
Yeah, so you weren't doing technology business reviews, you were doing timid business reviews. Yeah, timid was, business <laughs> reviews. You had yeah. the wrong kind yeah. of TBRs. Yeah. 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 So um, when you think about, you know, you already, I think, gave some kind of guidance to folks, but if you think about somebody who's just getting started or somebody who's been doing this for years, but they're not getting the results that they want, what's some advice you'd give them about how to, how to make this stuff happen and how to, how to see some breakthrough results? You know, I questioned that myself and um, for me, I wanted proof of concept with the T, uh, TMT marketing. And so, and that's what I told, you know, my coaches, all I needed was proof of concept. And that came so quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely so quickly. Uh, within two weeks, I had added uh, $77,000 to our, to our top wow. line revenue. Uh, within six months, you know, that went up to over $400,000 to our top line. Um, just absolutely, you know, incredible output there or ROI. But I would say for those that are timid, start small, start yeah. with a TBR campaign, start with just a nine word email, you know, trying to find some of those inactive clients that, you know, that you haven't heard from in six months and kind of bring them back into the conversation little by little. If, if I would assume that most new partners of TMT is gonna have a lot of inactive clients too, um, and so that's where we looked at. We had a hundred and over 170 inactive clients that we haven't heard from, from the acquisitions. Mm. And we started there. We started just the little emails here and there. And then we had that proof of concept. Once we got proof of concept, it was off to the races. It was MSP success magazine, uh, physical shock and awe boxes, um, getting the FMM and a Sherpa. And it just made sense. And, you know, I pound the table enough. I can't pound the table enough about having a, uh, you know, uh, FMM. That's yeah. incredible. That's fractional marketing yeah, manager. Fractional for those. marketing yeah. manager. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one of the questions I was going to ask, but I want to follow up. You said, did you, did I hear you right that you started with TMT March of 2022? Uh, I signed up and I had a couple of months before rapid. I right. had a couple of months that, you know, I was just anxious, anxious to get to Franklin. Sure. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's how it started. So it's me. only January of 2023 right now. So you're talking about getting this kind of results in a, nine, a six to nine month time frame. Yes. Wow, that's Absolutely. wild. So any specific things you, did you already have all the people in place? Obviously you said you added the fractional marketing manager. Did you have all the people in the roles <laughs> in place or were there other substantive changes you had to make inside the business to get the results that quickly? Do you have to add people on or change people's roles? You know, uh, it was uh, my own limitation, my mm. own limiting belief saying, I don't have the time, I don't have the time, I don't mm. have the time. And then, you know, once I bought into the product and I seen proof of concept, I made time. And yeah. then I could delegate my do not list, do not do list uh, yeah. to my personnel was already there. Have we added staff? Yes, we had to add technicians because of the more work. Sure. But in the back office, we're still building SDRs, we're still building our back office, uh, you know, so we can put our foot firmly on the gas pedal and keep it there. And it. so that's our only limitations now is we're starting to get to the point where we're gonna need some back office people, we're gonna need some sales. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're trying to get out of the mindset of being an IT company trying to do sales to becoming a sales company that does IT. We're trying to flip mm. the script. And so that's where we see the model. I love it. Anything else you want to tell the people before we wrap it, wrap it up? I uh, would just say, you know, if it's possible, use me as proof of concept. Um, uh, I'm just a Southern boy. I happened on uh, <laughs> TMT. If it, if it works for me, it can work for you too. Um, and then, and if anyone ever has questions, feel free and hit me up in person. All right. Thanks a lot, Tommy. Thank you, Dave. Yep. I appreciate it.